constituents. Uh, Mr. Dreschel and the Spectator wrote an article about Tom Jackson and the exhaustion yet that you have expressed that your constituents and even you, the longest serving councillor, are going through with the rapid change that is being pushed and promoted, especially in the downtown. And that encompasses LRT, and that's Cannon Street conversion, and that is the bus lane. A lot of stuff has been going on, and proponents have been pushing one-way, two-way conversion to be at a faster rate. And I think I would probably agree with, with you when you use the word prudent that Councillor Collins has struck the right chord when he suggested, let's go back and deal with what has been approved over the last five, six, seven, eight years get on with that business before we add more streets. The proper way to go, the prudent way to go? I would agree, Doug. By the way, I, I'm more refreshed and reinvigorated than ever before. I've bought a Nordic trainer, I've been taking my vitamin D's more often, and I bought a bottle of Cod Liver Oil since that article, so <laughs> I'm feeling better and better all the time. So you're not uh, exhausted, you're no, denying that you're exhausted. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, all kidding aside, Doug, what I was trying to say was, it. it it, um, the bubble burst when there was a consultant's report about three weeks ago uh, wanting the uh, city council to spend almost a hundred grand on a consultant's report to study more one-way to two-way conversions. And you know, ironically, and forgive me for having to take a moment to say this, for a guy from 10 years ago who so has supported the John James Street mm -hmm. conversions to two-way, the York Boulevard conversion in front of our market and, and Central Library, the Hess Street, the Caroline conversions, um, who has supported a lot of uh, projects for downtown. I'm not saying I led them, but I definitely have provided the Ward 6 vote towards the momentum and the rebirth going on downtown, whether it's been the Lister Block, City Hall, uh, providing the downtown enterprise incentives from a tax standpoint and uh, from, uh, from a business standpoint to entice businesses to invest in downtown, the 20 million for the McMaster Health Campus that our public health department would be in. So then finally, I, I'm starting to hear from my constituents that, Tom, the pace of change downtown, we're still trying to negotiate, even around the St. Joe's Hospital, half of those left turn, uh, left turn arrows in that, Tom, that we can now go this way and that way. And, and, I, and I said, you know what? It's, I thought it was everyone's downtown. And I respect the fact that there are neighborhoods that are growing, that uh, there's a resurgence in pockets of our city that from a neighborhood standpoint, they want the same as other parts of the city have, whether East End, Mountain, the suburban communities, uh, a better quality of life, count me in. Mm -hmm. I want to support that. But do you know, Doug, for all those conversions, uh, something like 20 of them, two-way conversions that have been previously approved, there's no dollars in the capital budget for it. And again, when Councillor Collins put his motion, finally, after Council overwhelmingly said no to the nearly $100,000 consultant's report to study more two-way conversions, Queen Street's a, a controversial one, uh, Cannon Street. Uh, oh, speaking of Cannon Street, if I can digress for a moment, I support the $1.6 million for the bi-directional bike lanes on Cannon. And I actually had a number of my constituents kind of scratching their heads going, Tom, 1.6 mil for, I said, look, it's a tired. And the costly maintenance, especially in it's the a, winter. Exactly, and it's a kind of like, well, it's a part of the city that uh, can't, if you're driven Cannon, it needs a facelift. It, it, it lo looks a little tired, that stretch. The dedicated bus lane on King, mixed results across the board. Cyclists want to use it. Cyclists can't use it. Uh, cars are going in and out of it. Can't even see the markings half the time. Anyways, back to my point about the prudent course of action finally in the last week or two. We've got to get some capital dollars into the two-way conversion fund that hasn't come forward. So basically, Councillor Collins's motion, which over, had overwhelming support, said let's at least get one or two in in future capital budgets, do the approved list, do one or two a year, and let that compete against other projects. And again, my back to basics theme. <clears throat> and Doug, the last thing I want is losing political or geographic support outside of the wards one, two, three areas. And I, I was forewarning about a year ago, mm -hmm. folks, the pace of this change, 
I'm all for change, not change just for the sake of change alone, because you got to give me an argument why change should be done. But look, with the waterfront stuff I'm involved with now this term of council, I love change. I, I, I'm happy with the progressives that are passionate, especially in the downtown. But you don't want to lose 12 other wards potentially from continuously supporting. And if the message from those constituents through their local councillors and the mayor's office is going, slow down, stop it, that's not going to help the momentum or the kinds of further change that some of the very passionate, outspoken advocates in the lower city want. And so that was the point I was trying to make. I want to get to the heart.